While pilsners originated in the Czech Republic, there are styles of pilsners that are uh, named for many of the different uh, countries of Europe where pilsners have developed their own style, their own, uh, well, sub-style, I suppose. This is Zeugelhaus's Zeugel Pils, which is a northern German-style pilsner. When I looked up what makes a German-style pilsner a German-style pilsner, it was noted that, in general, a German-style pilsner will have less of a prominent hop characteristic, or a less bitter hop characteristic than a Bohemian or Czech Pilsner. When I read the Zeugel Pils uh, back label, it notes that their brewmaster, who's German trained, loves brewing according to the German purity law of 1516, that's the Reinheitsgebot. And in fact, we only use German malts, hops, and yeast for our gold medal winning Zeugel Pils of all the Pilsner substyles, the one brewed in northern Germany is the driest and crispest, with a bold hop character. Hercules and Herzbrucker hops shine while providing the spicy and snappy hop flavors and aromas of this classically brewed Pils. Let's check that out. Well, pouring it, it certainly is a light-colored Pilsner. There is no red to this at all. It is yellow. Um, it is very clear. And the head is white and lacy. The smell is um, malty. A little bit... Maltiness is kind of a sweetness, but it's a bread sweetness. It's not like a sugar or candy or fruit sweetness. And there's a little bit of a spiciness, um, not really herbal, just a little bit of a snap to the uh, accompanying the, the malt bready sweetness. I believe I had my first Zeugel House uh, beer at the Tumwater Artesian Brew Festival two years ago or so. Yeah, probably two years ago. Uh, I really enjoyed it. They had two or three beers on tap there. I don't require recall specifically which one it was that I had, but I remember enjoying it and making a mental bookmark that that was a, uh, a brand I needed to stock and uh, keep, in my my, or keep in my refrigerator from time to time. And indeed, I generally have uh, mostly around the summer because they tend to brew the, or I tend to be able to find their Pilsners, uh, their Czech Pilsner, their German Pilsner, um, and um, I think their Hefeweizen, yeah, their Hefeweizen as well. Uh, I tend to be able to find those pretty readily at the smaller bottle shops in the area. So that's what I tend to get from them. And I enjoy every one of them. They are clean, they are easy drinking, uh, with their real classical intent, their intent to be a, a true German style or a Czech style uh, version of the beer. I really appreciate that. So many times when you get an American brewery making a European beer style, it's definitely Americanized. Stronger hops, uh, usually the malts are playing second fiddle, they are using American hops often, and that's to appeal to an American palate, so nothing wrong with that. But in my quest of enjoying, not really quest, in the fact that I enjoy, in my enjoyment of, <laughs> in my enjoyment of the wide-ranging world of beer, there's something to be said for drinking it like, like it's supposed to be, or drinking a, a beer that is true to its roots because the roots came from somewhere they have significance they have value and plus they're good to drink so why not drink them enjoy the americanized versions enjoy the originals ish <laughs> it's not an original it's a copy of a copy but uh still you know what i'm saying hmm with this sweetness i would say and perhaps this comparison makes more of the mass American lager um, and might be a little bit a downplay on the Zoigo Pills, but just the, the simplicity. This is a beer that's meant to be enjoyed, not necessarily on a warm day, though for us, we would definitely think of it as a warm day beer. And to be enjoyed with, um, you know, where you're not planning on savoring the beer itself. 
the point of this is to drink it with friends, to drink it in a pub or a bar, um, and at a restaurant, and and to enjoy the things that are going on besides the beer. Not that the beer is not going to be enjoyable, but that it serves a place, and that place isn't necessarily to be the the um, the marquee act, right? It, it accompanies. It makes things better for having been there alongside. It is, it is a, a social lubricant to, eh, not really misuse the term, but this exists to improve other things. Let's put it that way. And boy, howdy, does it improve them. <laughs> This has a creaminess to it, so there's a creaminess. Um, there's a little bit of an herbal spice to the the finish. That's really refreshing. So like a like a West Coast IPA has that kind of hot brushiness that that finishes that lingers. That's the final warming note of the beer and often hangs around forever and a day and makes you want to drink more. This has a really nice spicy hop finish that that's inviting, that wants, that makes you want to continue drinking it. But it doesn't hang around forever. It was there for maybe five seconds or so. It was just kind of this deft little paintbrush of bitterness, uh, real cleanse, palate cleansing bitterness just down the back of your tongue. And this is very low bitterness, relatively speaking. My wife enjoys this, and as I've said many a time before, she is not a fan of hot bitterness in general. She enjoys uh, tart beers. She enjoys... Um, malty beers. She does not enjoy West Coast IPAs or even Northeastern IPAs, uh, hazy IPAs, which reminds me, I need to correct myself and stop calling hazies Northeasterns because they are not all Northeasterns, but that is neither here nor there. That is my next video. Um, my wife really enjoys this and a few of the other Zoigel House, actually all of the other Zoigel Houses I brought home, my wife has enjoyed greatly. Uh, very moderate or low hot bitterness that serves to highlight the rest of the beer and kind of focuses you back on the malts. That's what the hops exist for here. So we've got this. It's not quite bready because it is it is a relatively dry beer, um, a cracker maltiness, um, but it's still sweetish, so it's kind of bready, like sweet-ish, not sweetish. Um, so it is still kind of a little bit bready, uh, maybe a white bread almost. And then, and then it almost maybe a touch of corn. But I know this is brewed using, I, I'm certain it is brewed using entirely barley, especially considering they're using uh, German malts. Uh, German malts are barley. That's what it is. While Hefeweizens. Um, had a special exemption from the Reinheitsgebot. They had to have an exemption because they did not meet the Reinheitsgebot because they used wheat in the malt. So this being a German malt uh, brewed according to Reinheitsgebot means it is a 100% barley malt, which takes a lot more work to put together because barley, even malted, doesn't produce its sugars as readily as, say, a corn or a rice would. And, well, mostly a corn. Corn just vomits sugars everywhere. Uh, you're welcome for that, you know, uh, thought picture. <laughs> but getting back to some place where I might have been derailed from previously, this is a, a bready, slightly sweet, but still quite dry, uh, herbal, spicy, delicious, light-bodied, but full flavored beer. It's really good. If you find yourself uh, coming from the land of American lagers, uh, Budweiser, the, the, the full Budweiser, not, not light, uh, Miller, Coors, this is gonna be a little more, the, the hops will be a little more prevalent, a little more prominent in this beer, but they're so neatly balanced in there that they're really good and they're welcome. You'll probably find this pretty familiar territory. Not not the same thing, but maybe just the next block over. Uh, not to say that this is a syrupy, sweet, corn-heavy, um, mass-produced beer. Far from it. This is a craftly 
created um, German recipe beer that has a little bit of familiar sweetness to it, but that sweetness comes from a very different place. The sweetness comes from the barley malts and is skillfully applied to the rest of the beer. Anyways, I am down a, not even a creek, because a creek is moving in a direction, and I am simply going in circles. I am, I am uh, lost in a delta <laughs> of words. And for that, I'm going to stop this, because the beer is far better than clearly I can describe. And I'm going to have to edit a lot, hopefully present a thoughtful and reasoned and meaningful and comprehensible explanation of why this Zeugel House's Zeugel Pils Northern German Style Pilsner is a good beer. Because it is. Anyways, this is Matthew. I have been chewing the brew poorly, and I will catch y'all on the flip side.